Okay, I think we'll go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone. Thanks so much for being here and for spending part of your Friday with me. It's been a fantastic week um, of sessions throughout the ACTE Visions Conference, um, and I'm sure you've got a lot of great information to take back to your work um, next week and beyond, and hopefully we'll give you a few other items that you can, you can think about um, in the weeks to come. My name is Laura T. Landegraff. I am the Director of Public Relations at ECMC Group, and I'll, I'll explain to you who we are and why we developed this campaign in a few minutes, but, but just um, one housekeeping note, you've got a chat function, so feel free to, to chat amongst yourselves, if you will, there, and then, um, and then I'll, I'll try to answer any questions that you post either later in the session, or I'll have my contact information up um, at the end, and you can certainly email me and we can have um, more direct direct interaction. So needless to say, we are in a very interesting time. Um, while many of us who support the education industry have been talking about and focused on the benefits of CTE for, for many, many years, COVID and its impact on education as a whole and post-secondary education in particular has really the potential to provide an opportunity for us to shine an even brighter light, um, given all of us that are kind of evaluating and re-evaluating re where education is right now and where it should be. Um, I do see it as an opportunity for us to, to shine a greater light on an area that maybe folks don't know about, which is basically why we, we developed this campaign. We also know that two thirds of the country's more than 7 million jobs require education beyond high school, but less than a four year degree. Again, another opportunity that CTE provides. So really now more than ever, we have this, we have this light, if you will, to shine um, for learners and, and for employers and, and that can benefit the economy as a whole. So um, as I mentioned, I am with ECMC group and, and at the, at the onset, you know, everything that we do is focused on helping students succeed. And we do that in three different areas. Through our foundation, which you may be familiar with, ECMC Foundation, they fund education innovation um, through, they distribute about 45 million each year in annual grants in the areas of career readiness and college success. We also educate students and families about the cost of college and the best way to navigate that path to post-secondary education. And we do that through our guarantor. Um, we have seven college access centers around the country that, that help north of 50,000 students a year on that path to college, right? Whether it's helping them fill out the FAFSA or find scholarships, um, fill out college applications and so on. We also provide um, a plethora of college access tools to more than 400,000 families each year. And we provide support for borrowers through uh, that have felt student loans. And lastly, um, we actually um, provide CTE education through our three Altiris Career Colleges that are located in Atlanta, Houston, and Tampa. Those schools provide programs in healthcare and the skilled trades. Um, we also recently launched Altiris Training Solutions. So in partnership with businesses, what we're doing is we are providing resources for them to be able to, to upskill their current employees or to reskill re and, and skill um, potential employees as, as they come in the door. So now let's let's get into the campaign a little bit. So the campaign is, is titled Question the Quo. Um, and really, you know, before we started this campaign, it was it was kind of thinking about CTE in general and, and through all of the work that we do, you know, while there's lots of folks like lots of people on this call right now that that really tout the benefits of CTE on a regular basis, there is still a big segment of the population that doesn't understand what CTE is and what it can provide in the future for, for a variety of learners. And so through that um, and all of our work, we thought, you know, what if we helped shine a light on that benefit and, and developed a public awareness campaign? So at the end of the day, we developed this grassroots campaign, you know, that was designed to create some social buzz, um, make it easily shareable and can build some momentum over time, right? And really shine this light. Um, and so, you know, initially when we were looking at developing the campaign, first and foremost, it was, okay, who should our target audience be? Should it be, should it be high school counselors? Should it be parents who help in the decision-making process? Or should we look to high schoolers, right? Those 14 to 18 year olds, those young Gen Zers, right? That are, that are really in the midst of that decision-making process. Um, you know, should we go to them thinking that, you know, we could probably, um, have the most bang for our buck, if you will, because it's, it's a very segmented group. And we also thought that we could, we could really um, positively, um, you know, um, 
distribute the information to them in a variety of ways, you know, and a lot of what we did was through social media, which we all know that they are on social media. I've got, I've got two kids that are in this age range and, um, and they are on it a lot. <laughs> but at the end of the day, what, um, what this campaign is all about is giving Gen Z the confidence to take that career path that's right for them, rather than following social norms, right, rather than following what their friends are doing, or potentially an area that their parents are pushing them into that may not either fit their personal wants or even their financial wants. Um, and when we de developed this campaign, we really wanted it to speak to this demographic, these 14 to 18 year olds. We wanted it to be relevant and on trend. We didn't want it to come across as, as a corporation that was speaking down to them. We, we again wanted it to be something that was empowering and welcoming and smart. Um, so you can see, you know, question the quo has got a, I don't wanna say it's edgy, but it's just kind of got this, this interesting, okay, what does that mean? And then we use the bright colors and, and so on and so forth. Um, so, so that that's the benefit. That's the elements of the campaign. So, thinking about the campaign. So, when 2020 started, we had a full slate of activities that we wanted to put into play throughout 2020. And the first of which was a national survey um, that we that we fielded in February of 2020 of 1100 Gen Zers age 14 to 18. And what we were trying to do with that was to uncover their insights about post-secondary education, right? What they thought about it, did they think it was beneficial? Did they think it was necessary? Were they all on that four-year path? And we also wanted to uncover what their thoughts were just in general. Did they think that their situation may be better than their parents? Um, you know, were they, what kinds of, of jobs were they looking at and so on and so forth. So we fielded the survey in February, um, got the results back, actually was, we're about to, to distribute them and, and make them live and then COVID hit. And we like so many, you know, took a step back um, and, and really kind of reevaluated and thought, okay, the world has turned upside down would these insights from these Gen Zers be viewed as old, right? And, and maybe because the world turned upside down, maybe their thoughts and insights, you know, had changed drastically. So what we decided to do is to do another national survey of 1100 Gen Zers, and then we could compare and contrast, right? To find out, okay, yes, in fact, things did change um, or, or they didn't change. And so, and that would be interesting either way to us. So we have these two national surveys. And, and again, as I said, so by this time we we surveyed 2,200 and it was Gen Zers from around the country, 14 to 18 year olds, all different economic levels, urban, rural, um, different ethnicities. Again, we wanted to have a really great sample um, just to make sure that we really had a good pulse on, on what they were thinking. So we compiled these results. Um, we developed a microsite, questionthequo.org, which I'll talk about a little bit later, but I, I invite you to visit that as well. Um, we did a lot in, this, in the social space, a lot of activation. As I mentioned, this group is definitely online and they're on their, they're on their devices and that's where they're sharing and, and gathering their information. We utilized the hashtag questionthequo. Um, we obviously did traditional outreach to media um, and then a lot of social. We launched the campaign in June of 24. You know, we were kind of navigating <laughs> the various news cycles that occurred throughout the year. Um, so the campaign's been live between four and five months, and we've really been excited by, by the engagement that we've received and the interest. Um, and, and we're seeing that we are really, um, we are really, you know, hitting a nerve with this group and then with others, just like, just like you all on this call. So let's get to some of the insights that I uncovered. So first and foremost, we found out that this group believes in the value of post-secondary education. They believe it is necessary and they believe that it is beneficial. However, more than half of those are open to something other than a four-year degree. So if you think about that, 50% of these you know, upcoming um, post-secondary learners are open to something other than that, right? And 70% want to forge their own path. However, the rub comes when only 43% are familiar with career and technical education, right? There's a, that's a big percentage that don't really understand what CTE is and, and what that can look like in the future. So that, that's an opportunity for us to really connect the dots for them and to show them that there is a path here that's different than that traditional four-year. You know, not saying that one is better than the other, but really just putting it out there as an option and an opportunity and one that they, that they should feel free to explore. Um, another good point is that 80% of the top careers that these folks want have CTE pathways, right? So, so another 
you know, strong element that's showing that that CTE could be could be the pathway for them. Um, and in addition, they really appreciate the opportunity to learn in a hands on environment, which again, very much um, aligns with the CTE and, and how we provide how we provide it. So we also just wanted to take a pulse a little bit on their their psyche, right? Um, and kind of what they were thinking. You know, we asked questions like, you know, do you think that you are will be better able to find a job than your parents? And most of them were very confident that they would be able to. They also very much want to follow their passions over over money. As you can see, only thirty percent said their success will be defined by how much money they make. Much more focused on on having a job that matches their passions, um, and so so we really again have this opportunity to connect the dots for them and to show them that there there are opportunities in the CTE space that may very well align with their passions. This group also understands the connection between a skill and how that translates into getting a job um, after after they're finished with their training. So so they you know. 74% three fourths see that as making a lot of sense to have to have a, a tactile skill, if you will, um, to, to bring to the market. So that that's really interesting to us. And, and this group also is very realistic when it comes to the need to be lifelong learners. Um, they, they fully expect to work a multitude of jobs throughout their working careers and, and that they will be upskilling and reskilling throughout that. So, so when you think about this group, um, you know, yes, they are young, 14 to 18 year old, 18 year olds, but they are very, they're very attuned to what's happening. And, and yes, they're connected and that connected, that connectedness also helps them keep, keep abreast of what's going on um, around them, really. Perhaps not surprising, um, the cost of college continues to be a major factor. Six in 10 worry how they'll pay for college. And that cost of college really um, ends up being a major deciding factor for a lot of them. And, and in addition to that deciding factor, it's interesting because as we say, you know, these 14 to 18 year olds, they're young, but, but they also um, believe that government and business should potentially play a role in their future. And whether that's, whether that's government providing additional money to help them pay off student loans, which is obviously a very big topic right now, or, or businesses offering tuition reimbursement or potentially um, you know, money to help them pay off their student loans. These are all things that they're looking to, to government and business in the future. And so, so again, as we're evaluating and reevaluating what's, what's happening right now in the economy and, and kind of COVID and post COVID, I do think that these are really interesting things for us to consider and for businesses to consider too, as they are going to be looking to attract um, these future learners. The second survey that we did, because we were we were three months in, and um, you know, and so they had been experiencing COVID just just for a little while. We did have a few questions about what their experience was with COVID and how they felt about it. Now, please, you know, these were just three months in, and so these may alter these may feel much different if we had surveyed just you know a few weeks ago. But but I thought that it would be interesting just to share this information. You know, perhaps not surprisingly. 39% felt the coursework was less challenging with digital classes. I mean, we all know that there was, it was a mad dash, right, to shift things and particularly, um, you know, a difficult shift when it came to providing career and technical education. I mean, our schools went through the same type of shift. Um, you know, thankfully they were very successful at it, but, but it, was, it was difficult. And so this isn't necessarily surprising that that many students found it less challenging. Um, you know, nearly 60% believe that education will suffer due to less time in the classroom. I think now more than ever, these students understand the importance and the benefit of being in the classroom. And I don't know that they'll ever <laughs> take it for granted. Um, and then 50% believe that we will see increased inequality due to the lack of technology access. I mean, if COVID, shined a light on something um, more than anything, it shined a light on the fact that there is a major digital divide that has happened when it comes to education. And so again, there's a real opportunity to, to address that issue and, um, and to hopefully alleviate it in, in the coming years. Okay, so now I'm going to shift a little bit to talk about some of the elements of the campaign. So as I mentioned, I mean, obviously, this group is, is on, on their devices, and they are on Instagram a lot. 
And so we decided that that was going to be our platform of choice for our sponsored campaign. So we, um, we developed an, or we sponsored an eight week um, campaign on Instagram. And what we did is we designed these very creative, colorful um, posts that would go into Instagram feeds. We utilized statistics from the survey um, and then, you know, obviously made them bright and colorful. And then these even had some animation, animation so that folks would stop and take a look um, and take a look at them as they as they scrolled through. Um, and this campaign was immensely successful. We had 18.4 million impressions, more than double the benchmark for a similar campaign. So, so that to us said, okay, we are speaking to them and we are we are hitting a nerve when it comes to this topic. And so that was that was really um, that you know made us feel like this was a beneficial campaign. We also had um, a very high click-through rate when it came to the microsite. These ads, actually, the call to action was to direct folks to the microsite. And so, um, you know, 16% of those that saw these clicked through a similar campaign usually has a 2% click-through rate. So again, um, it, was, it was hitting a nerve and it was hitting a topic that was obviously very top of mind to these students, which was fantastic. Um, and then even more so, what was interesting to us is I don't know how many of you are on Instagram, but when you when you go through the feed and you've got these sponsored posts coming through, I mean, we may stop as we're scrolling and and take a look and then scroll on, but um, a rarity would be for someone to stop and actually make a comment. Um, but but we were getting comments on all of the posts. So so basically, we were getting this interaction and this engagement from these students. So not only were they reading, stopping and reading, but they were also taking the time to ponder it and then and then um, put their comments out there, which which was fan just fantastic to us. And again, it was great to get these very organic insights that were coming out and, and something that we were we were really pleased with. Here's an example of one of the posts. This one had the most engagement. Um, and again, it gets back to this passion over profits. 87% of teens think true success is having a job that matches their passion. And then here's just a, a small sampling. I think we had close to 50 comments on this one. Um, but you know, like the one says, if, if everyone worked office jobs, we wouldn't have artists and mathematicians. It's the 21st century, adapt to your environment, do what you love um, and so on. So it's just interesting to hear directly from these 14 to 18 year olds. And again, the fact that they were taking the time to stop and, and to make a comment and, and even to have some discussions back and forth with each other. So as I mentioned, we developed um, a website, questionthequo.org. So here, um, here is what the top of the website looks like. And I'm just gonna share, um, at the very beginning, there's this video. So I just wanna share this and then it's just a 30 second video and then I'll, I'll um, come back on the other side. So that video was really just a bit of a teaser for them just to kind of, um, you know, get them thinking about, okay, what if there were other options and, and maybe they hadn't thought about them at all. So, so, so the website starts out with that message and then it goes into including some, um, some additional of the statistics that we uncovered. And then we scroll down and um, we've got information about the 13 job fields within CTE. And then within all those job fields, we have potential career paths just to give them Kind of some insight about what what a career path would look like in with that CTE track, right? Um, and then if you scroll down a little bit farther, you will find various um, various free resources for college planning. You know, our our um, guarantor distributes a, a lot of various college resources that I talked about. You know, we've got a college planning work, workbook. Um, they can have access to our to our college access centers and so on and so forth. So so if the folks haven't gone very far or just starting that exploration process, they can also utilize those resources. So really we wanted this to serve as an, as an opportunity to kind of get them thinking a little bit more and start them a little bit farther down the path. Um, so in addition to these tactics, oops, excuse me. 
we also have been doing a bit of grassroots amplification through through discussions just like this one right um, you know we're having a lot of discussions with industry partners like ACTE advanced CTE um, I spoke to the American School Counselors Association earlier this week and so so the folks that we're hearing we're talking to are really appreciating this you know at the end of the day we are all um, our goal is all to help these learners right and to put them on a path to, to career success so um, you know we also also are looking at our community partners. We've been having discussions with, we have um, relationships with junior achievements throughout the country. Um, you know, a few of them have asked us for, for elements like this one pager um, that we developed here is an example. So, so um, a partner was having a virtual event for, for some students and they were having a virtual swag bag. So they asked us if, if we had a one pager that we could develop that they could put in the virtual swag bag and make available, um, available to their students. We also have been crafting um, social media posts so that folks can, can share the information and again, direct students to the website to learn a little bit more. Um, and we are more than willing and open to, to having other discussions and, and speaking with other potential partners and, and figuring out how we can leverage um, all of our synergies, if you will, and, um, and, and move this forward for, for the benefit of the students. So we had the first two surveys that we fielded um, earlier this year. And, and you know, I'm thinking about it, um, we really wanted to take one more pulse of this group, right? And just kind of get a sense of, okay, after you've lived in this environment, this COVID environment for a year, have things shifted now for you, right? Maybe they didn't shift within those first three months, but maybe 12 months into it, there, it, there's potential that there could have been a really great shift. So we are going back um, and, and surveying another 1,100 Gen Zers in January. And we're going to be asking um, many of the same questions that we asked in the initial survey um, so that we can do a compare and contrast, right? And to find out, okay, here's, here's the barometer where they were in February, 2020, and here's where they are in, in January of 2021, right? So I think that we'll, we'll uncover some, some interesting insights. And in addition, you know, that first survey really wanted to kind of uncover their thoughts about did they did they think that um, that um, see that um, post secondary education was important and beneficial and, and kind of their overall thoughts. But now now that we know that, yes, they do think that it's very interesting. But, you know, again, 50 percent are open to something other than a four year degree and 71 afford their own path. So then it's like, OK what what should that path look like right and so we really want to kind of uncover their thoughts about what they would like to see and again as cte providers i think that that's really going to be paramount in kind of how we develop um, um, products and services and things to serve them going down the road right and so so that's the third national survey we're going to field it as I mentioned in January, and we're going to release the results in February of 2021, CTE month, um, and we'll be doing, you know, similar amplification through social and traditional media. Uh, you know, um, we're also going to have have a few other pieces that we're going to make available, but we'd more than welcome um, any partner amplification through you all, um, you know, very open to conversations about how we can enhance and expand this effort for the future. Um, you know, we've been really happy with, with the results and the engagement engagement and, and how folks have really um, embraced the statistics that we've uncovered. Um, you know, what we found is that there hasn't been much surveying happening of this demo. And so I think that this has been a real opportunity to uncover um, some information that maybe wasn't known before and, um, and to share it. And so, so that is, is the, the future of, of question the quo, if you will, um, to start off 2021. Um, and so that brings me to the end of kind of my prepared information. This is my contact information. And so, as I say, I would welcome any, any um, questions. I'm just going to see if I can log on and find some answers. Any questions or if you've got um, ideas how we can partner or, or um, any, any types of, of ideas that you've got, I would be more than happy to, to have discussions. And, and as I said, you know, at the end of the day, we really are all trying to help these learners and put them on a path um, to, to career success, right? So, so yeah. Let me just see. Um, I don't know that we have any questions at this point. One question that has come up, I've done several presentations like this, and one question that has come up is, are, are, am I sharing all of the data points, all of the data sets from the surveys? And while we're not you know, handing over all of the data sets, more than happy to provide some more in-depth information um, and, and to share the, the information that we've uncovered and um, 
we've got lots of cross tabs and, and all kinds of things. So, so it would be more than happy to, to have conversations about that as well. So I don't know that we have any questions. So I'm going to give you back <laughs> six minutes of time um, on this Friday. Again, I, I appreciate you spending time here um, on a Friday afternoon and, and learning a little bit more about this campaign. As I say, feel free to reach out um, and, um, and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much.